and welcome back to Makers on Tap, the podcast where makerspace directors drink and talk about making stuff and maker culture. I'm your host, Aaron, and joining me are Joe, Sam, and Christian. This is an exciting episode tonight because we're actually back in the makerspace studio. So we even have a really nice mic, thanks to Aaron's Yay! parents, right? Yeah. This is my Christmas present this year. Thanks, Aaron's parents. It is the, the AKG. P420 Blaze It microphone. Special edition. <laughs> Only made by Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have a couple uh, very loosely thrown together news segments tonight. Uh, which one do we want to do first? Let's do the plotter one. So, what's his face? Joe, you know his name. Uh, it's Bart Dring or uh, B Dring. Yeah. So his username is BD Ring. Yeah. And on the uh, on buildlog.net, he uh, actually uploaded a revised edition to his original polar coaster project. Um, he made it a bit more robust, and it looks a lot neater. But it's actually so it was it was originally using some custom G code type controller. Yeah. But now it's using the Gerbil ESP32 ports. That thing is, I. I <laughs> Everyone knows my opinion on Gerbil. The ESP32 version, though, is super cool. Like, it's so lightweight, and everything's Wi-Fi. It, Everything ESP32 is awesome. If it's not in a machine that can kill you, I think it's really neat. <laughs> <laughs> a, uh, a coaster plotter is pretty great. So, real quick, though, for those of you that don't understand why this plos- plotter, coaster plotter is so neat, it uses polar coordinates. So, uh, what that means is... Circular coordinates. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so instead of the head moving in a rectangular fashion, like left and right and up and down, uh, the y-axis is actually a rotation, and then the x-arm just moves in and out. So it's kind of like a CD player. One moves in an arc. Yeah. While one moves away from the center and towards the center. Yeah. Who are you? (laughs) That's cool. (laughs) Who is this guy in the studio talking about polar coordinates like he knows things? I'm just trying to dumb it down. No, no. Who are you? With, Introduce yourself. I am yourself. Sam, and that's I hung out with Joe a lot from a long, long time ago, and then I moved away. Sam lived in. My Did you basement. go to that is all the credentials find he needs. Mordor <laughs> and drop off the ring? I can't walk that far. <laughs> I will literally die. Fair enough. <laughs> just ride the eagles. It'll be fine. <laughs> Sam and I played a lot of Halo in my basement for a long time. And uh, then he ruined my dog. And then he moved <laughs> away and got a pretty cool job. And uh, now he, now we just talk about ingenuity things. Sam is actually, for those of you that remember my star uh, project that was in uh, MakeZine, um, Sam wrote the software, or at least the, the part of the software that ported out the SVGs. I stole for somebody the star else's plot. software and you modified didn't steal it. It, a it was bit. open source. And then you forked it and made it so that we could actually output something laser cuttable. And yes. then we used that to make my wife a still unbeaten anniversary present. So, you know. <laughs> Great setting the standard for the rest of us. <laughs> what can I say? The idea is you set no expectations. <laughs> <laughs> so that there's never any disappointment. I mean... <laughs> All right, so we'll talk more about Sam in a while, but uh, moving on with news topics. Um, also, an other cool 3D printery CNC things that happened this week. Um, you know, I don't even have the guy's username. There was a Hackaday article uh, where a guy built a um, 3D printed Christmas ornament that 3D printed Christmas ornaments. And it was like the best thing ever. He, it was like the size, a little bit larger than a like Christmas tree ornament bobble, like the little balls. But inside it, it opened kind of like a Pokeball. And then it was a very tiny SLA printer uh, that utilized a, a small Arduino based LCD. And he changed out the uh, LEDs in it for UV LEDs and then used uh, transparency paper to make the uh, film for the bottom of the vat. So then it was a 3D printed vat. And uh, 
the linear ways were all 3D printed and you used CD drive stepper motors and a linear stage. The whole thing was beautiful. Gosh. And my favorite part was he started this project with barely two weeks to spare to from like start until Christmas time where you know he had to release the video or it made no sense. So it was a Joe project. A man after my <laughs> own heart. And he succeeded. I there's just nothing else to say. I just I, I, I love people with poor planning skills and poor time management skills that can still get cool shit done. So yeah. <laughs> That's some insanity. <laughs> right? I know. That's about how my uh, Christmas presents went for my parents. Yeah. I made an Internet of Things stock price ticker for my dad, and that was based on the particle photon. And I didn't expect it to be this hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's we, how it always goes. Yeah. Well, I mentioned it you know, in a very previous episode where I talked about the guy who made a uh, HTTPS library for yeah. doing calls for that. Yeah, so that doesn't work that well. <laughs> and... Uh, it's very hard to do it other without having a library for that. Okay. So if you don't have a library that works well, for one thing, just doing any of that certificate checking takes most of the device's RAM. Right. So you run you have very little space for programming. And you mentioned that in that podcast. Yeah, I did. Was... Yeah. So um, at least the nice thing with Particle is that you get access to the Particle cloud. So I was able to, you can actually make a webhook. That so like all the certificate checking and the API calls is done by the particle cloud, and then all your data just gets pushed back to your device, which is pretty neat. Hmm. And by particle cloud, you mean somebody else's computer? Well, yes, but yeah, sure. Where, where do it's, those servers reside, Aaron? I know what you're doing. <laughs> I know what you're doing, Joe. But literally, I cannot run a particle cloud. <laughs> it's different. And I, I specifically used the particle photon because I hate them. And I, it was in my drawer. I wanted it gone. So uh, That is logic I can't argue with. <laughs> yeah, so the, the goal was less than 20 bucks spent. Nice. And I already had a lot of the stuff on hand to make it. You hear that, Aaron's dad? You were only worth 20 bucks. But he was also worth a good, I don't know, four straight days of programming, 300 lines of code, a whole day spent working on the laser cutter here. Well, diff- multiple laser cutters as I burnt the fuse out on the one we were I was using. <laughs> I had to compromise my personal values and, lose, and use a Glowforge to cut the rest. Oh, man. I know. I All know. Right. It's better. Right. You're worth way more than 20 bucks, Aaron. <laughs> yeah. Like way more. You're, yeah. you're worth some integrity lost. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some morals were crushed in the making of yeah. this project. <laughs> I love you, Dad. <laughs> Remember it. <laughs> oh, I made my gosh. parents a bathtub painting. <laughs> and, and I mean, it's phenomenal. Oh, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> it looks like uh, probably an eighth, fifth grader would do it. Dude, like, you put that in the right art gallery, I bet you're getting four or five so, grand for that. So, why is it overflowing, though? It's in the woods, and the shower head is a flower coming down, and it's, it's symbolic. Don't you understand? <laughs> if you I'm go over to Joe's it, house, man. you better be like, where's Sam's painting? I want to see it. <laughs> It'll be Joe hanging right next to, to Sam's uh, 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 periodic table of the elements that's hanging up in my basement as well. Lots of Sam's art is in my basement. Because, <laughs> you know, enough. Sam's not in my basement anymore, so his art has to be there. <laughs> or the ten fish tanks. Yeah, I don't have ten fish tanks in my basement either anymore. That sounds like a sad house without ten like fish an, tanks. I know, right? That sounds like an improvement. <laughs> you so- and me have different opinions. Sounds like somebody's <laughs> trying to move. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. So, Joe, you have something neat out, outside the studio on one oh. of these desks. Oh, yeah. So, you know, like... 12 of our podcasts out of the 14 of them have talked about the E3D tool changer. I have one of the first betas and I'm so thrilled and I'm so frustrated because I've had it for six days now, five days, and it's not working. (laughs) And it is no fault of anybody except for society and their expectations that I show up to family Christmas, all of them, 
and not work on my 3D printer. How many Christmases do you have to go to this year? Four. I I have to go to six this year. Uh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yo, zero. I just, I just wanted to flex a little bit. There. Yo, well, okay. Because I'm still sour about all of it. We should recognize the fact that, like, we do have Christmases to go to, and it's nice that family, you know, cares, and, like, all of that. And I love my family, but at the same time, you guys interrupt a 3D printer building. <laughs> my time is valuable to me, and you took a lot of it. So, you know, realize that you guys apparently matter to me, because I gave all that up. Not really. I mean, my 3D printer's not working. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Make I mean, Confessions podcast. I, I feel like since it's not working already, and it's been six days since you received it, Sanjay's got to be listening, and he's going to revoke your status now. Like He knows. <laughs> he knows. He heard about it all the way up in, like... So they they shipped them um, like a couple days before Christmas, and I I I was I was going to receive it on Christmas Eve, which was the start of all of my Christmases, and I emailed them and I was like, "What do I need to do to get this on Saturday instead of Monday?" And um, if for those of you that don't know, E3D, even though they're in the UK, everything comes basically overnight through FedEx. So I knew it was going to be in the States, in my town, the next day on Saturday. And they are like, call FedEx. And FedEx was like, well, they would have had to click Saturday delivery to get it. So then, and this is a, a feather in FedEx's hat for me and not for everyone else that got their machine shipped in the beta, which there were five initially. I got one. Um... <laughs> I don't have a lot of moments to brag in my life. I'm excited about this one. Yeah, uh, keep rubbing it in, Joe. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm rubbing it in Aaron's face right now. Um, the, uh, the, the the FedEx guys, they got it in, in at my shipping depot, and I called them like as soon as I woke up on Saturday morning, and it's like, can I come get this? You're not very far from me. And I expected them to tell me that the container was sealed and they couldn't get it open in Monday until Monday because that's what they always tell me when I call. Um, but what they did tell me was, if you're patient, we're going to deliver it today because it's Christmas and we're trying to catch up on all our deliveries. And I was like, oh, <laughs> please do. Well, they didn't deliver it until like 8 o'clock that day, which is fine. I still got it. But... You know, it resulted in me not really getting to start on anything because Christmas actually started on Sunday. So, here I am, six days later with a partially assembled motion system and no assembled electronics. And now we're doing the podcast instead of building 3D printers. Yes, yeah, sucks so, to be you. <laughs> I edited this week's podcast instead of building the 3D printer. Like, So, you know, you guys know how much I love you. <laughs> Now. Oh, you edited a pre-recorded interview so it, I could upload it. Oh, geez. Thanks, Joe. Yo, there's some salt being thrown right here. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, free time is minimal. It was spent on the podcast I get it. I get instead it. of the printer. I appreciate your dedication. You guys are jerks. <laughs> so what kind of electronics did you plan on putting on that? Uh, so I'm running the Duet 2 Wi-Fi with nice. the... X5 expansion and the seven inch display. So Ooh, yeah, I, I really like You're going all out. I went out. Oh yeah, and I'm real excited about it. And then today in the tool changer discussion for the the beta testers, one of the designers of the machine, Greg, was like, I didn't really see how the seven inch display benefited the machine, so I didn't design an amount for it. And in my heart, I died a little bit because I was like, but I wanted the seven inch display so bad. But all that means is I get to design my own mount and yeah. contribute back to the community. So you're welcome. When are you When are you trying to have it done by? Tomorrow, <laughs> uh, it, as soon as possible. Um, I'm I am videotaping the whole process. Uh, videotaping shows my 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 34 years. Yeah. Videoing the whole process, and I'm gonna do time lapse of the whole build. One of the other guys is live streaming the whole build. Apparently, he has more free time than me. 
Uh, his name's Tony Aiken. If you guys want to look him up on social media, he's on Facebook, and uh, I think he's streaming everything over um, YouTube Live. But he's one of the developers of the Railcore, so if you search Railcore, you'll find him. Uh, yeah. Which is a really cool linear rail, uh, Core XY open source build. I love and, everything about that. And he um, is planning on taking the tool changer from this tool changer printer and adapting it to the rail core, which will make the rail core even more awesome. And Tony and I have been bouncing back and forth on a lot of things. I made the um, out, outer panels of his tool changer for him, and uh, it's been it's been a really fun communal build with a bunch of guys. So. Are you planning on taking it anywhere? Like, are you planning on showing it off at any events here soon? Everything that I go to. Uh, so it'll definitely be at Murph. Um, I'm really excited for Murph this year because most of the people that are in Beta 30 are also going to Murph. So it's going to be like the gathering of the tool changers. Um, <laughs> Great. That's that's exactly what we need. <laughs> Uh, but it'll be an engineering day this year, which is at our local museum. And, uh, you know, whatever else I go to that I can feasibly bring a 3D printer to, I'll probably drag it around to. So, so you can chronicle my build on uh, Instagram. I'm nemesis.robotics on Instagram. I've been posting all of that there. And so that brings me to a point. I'm going to pause here for a second. If we're okay mentioning this now, we will be at Murph. Oh, um, yeah. And you should totally yes. come yeah. and see us there. Yeah. Um, the reason I paused, if we do end up leaving that pause in for a second, was because I didn't know if we were okay to mention that. Yeah. But we're all pretty, we're all going, but the possibility is, is that we will actually be a sponsor and have a table at Murph as well. So if you are listening to this, we'd love to see you there and come hang out with us. The only reason it's a possibility is if you back out on your sponsorship money. Oh, really? <laughs> You're going to call me out on the podcast. All right, cool. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know if it, I mean... It's forty-two bucks. Man, I don't know if you can. <laughs> that's uh, that's really can, cutting in deep for me. Yeah. So what I question? will say is, <laughs> Makers on Tap is currently ran by the three of us. So it's self-funded, it's self-edited. It's the three of self-hosted. us. Self-hosted. Self-hosted. Very yeah. important to me. Yeah, like it's the three of us. It's a labor of love. So any money we spend sponsoring another event that we attend is money out of our pockets. Nobody's paying us for this podcast. Not if somebody yet. wants to pay us for this podcast, please contact us at makersontap at gmail.com. You hear that, Costco? <laughs> I I'm looking at you, Harbor Freight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at you, Industry Brewing. Oh, that We free, drink enough of your beer. Awesome. <laughs> so... We sponsor you. By Yay, drinking. new Glarus. Which brings Would me to you my mind hooking the brother up. <laughs> Which brings me to my first uh, over. What? What's an oversight where you screw up? Uh, yeah, yeah. First oversight of the podcast. We didn't talk about what we're drinking tonight. Oh man, I true. Suck. I suck. At my <laughs> I job. suck. I suck at my job. <laughs> Worst toast ever. Aaron. So, Joe, what are you drinking? I am drinking the industry brewing. Hint, hint. Uh, <laughs> no Call, No Show, which is an, an American Pale Ale. It's very citrusy. It's got some huge notes of grapefruit in it. It's one of my favorite beers, actually. And I would say that even if I wasn't trying to <laughs> chill you into sponsoring us industry brewing. Are you not drinking your haze? No. I. Uh, that was what I drank earlier, which was... Are they all gone? I don't I think they have them canned. They yet. didn't can them. You didn't get a growler. So they have a I growler. Didn't. You can get a growler of it, but I don't think they have them canned. Yeah, it, the the hazy IPA is a lot like this. It's a little more citrusy than the no call no show. Do you know why they used to call them growlers? No. All right, history drop. Let's hear it. Do it, Sam. Supposedly, it is because they wouldn't get the caps on completely, and they would slowly bubble as you carried them, making a little oh. bit of a growling sound. Uh-huh. Shook it up and it okay. Away. Interesting. That's awesome. I could be making this up, but that's <laughs> yeah, the that story I heard. Seems Stick legit. with it. Believe seems it. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> I am drinking the same thing as you. 
but I've almost finished mine, so I might have to leave and go get another one, but I don't know if that's allowed, so <laughs> we can make it As happen. long as yeah. you exit through the window, then I, it's totally cool. <laughs> and I'm going to leave all that audio in. <laughs> Christian? I am drinking the Nectar of the Gods, uh, the wonderful and abundant H2O. Uh, well, it's abundant here. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. On Mars, it is don't. not. <laughs> I mean, Even you know, here on Earth, there are I, some people, Chris, who, who don't have abundant access to water. Yeah? You, you're really going to hit me on this point? Boy. Of all the things I've ever said, you're going to grill me on water. I am very tipsy right now, and I will argue on <laughs> anything. <laughs> How about Podcast you, Aaron? What are you drinking? Of Aaron. <laughs> I, record Aaron. <laughs> I am drinking the Industry Brewing Nightcap, which is a oh, porter. That's why. And you're... it's in a crawler, <laughs> which a crawler, for those who don't remember, is a whole quart of and beer. And that's looking really and a can. light. <laughs> yeah, and it is very light. <laughs> and that's not his first one, so... Old re-record Aaron will be visiting <laughs> us again tonight. Old re-record Aaron is what they call me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. man. I went to friends from high school and like, hey, is that old re record Aaron? <laughs> I'd be like, yes. It is. Please. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so one of the things that we're all excited about having Sam on tonight about is um, talking about engineering failures. And uh, Sam is furiously scrolling through a paper. Talk about his engineering failures. He's putting way too much thought into all this. Yeah. Well, it's not totally failures. It's more of uh, hiccups in your project. <laughs> They're more opportunities. And how you work around them. Yeah. <laughs> it's improvement okay. opportunities. And to provide structure to this, I have selected a paper to scroll through 13 pages and read them to you, and then we're going to comment on them. All right. Sounds great. Yeah. It's going to be fun. All right. Fair enough. Or boring, and you're just going to listen to me talk for... We'll take it on home, Sam. Nothing's right. boring with you. Wait. Did we do a bio on Sam real quick? Did we do that earlier? I we did we, we're not going to do that. We did. All we so, know is that Sam used to live in Joe's basement. Yes. That's so, all we know. I think, I think we need a bit more ethos of who Sam so is. So let, let me, let me tell I like you. to build things, me, and me. usually the things I leave on my desk after I get halfway through, because... So the hard part's done on building it, and then it's like, yeah, it's all polishing and who holy likes to shit, sit? we've talked about this before. Who likes to polish stuff? We've had a oh, whole podcast did. on this. All right, we did that. So to give you guys some background, let me tell you about the first night Sam and I hung out. Oh, nobody wants to hear about this. Oh my god, it's the best story. Everybody <laughs> loves this story. So we are in my apartment, hanging out, playing Uno. And then all of a sudden, Sam's like, I'm bored. We're, we're pretty drunk. He's like, come outside. I was like, all right. This is after your friend tried to sell me a glass blower machine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. like you do. Like you do. <laughs> and uh, so we go outside, and we go to Sam's old beat-up Saturn, which was the best car for all of the fun. I later learned. They don't make those anymore. No, they don't. There's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah. I had rust in the frame. I missed my warranty by like three months so, on that. So Sam Sheesh. Sam rips open the back door of his car and pulls out two apparatuses and hands them to me. And they turn out to be jumping stilts. And if you've never seen jumping stilts, let me tell you, jumping stilts are a thing. You can do backflips over cars with jumping stilts if you know what you're doing. I did not, and was drunk. Neither did I. <laughs> so he uh, he had me sit on the back of his car, put these jumping stilts on, and go walk around the uh, uh, power risers. Yeah, had me go walk around oh, gosh. the uh, yeah those parking are lot. Those are legit. And so these things look like boots because you probably can't visualize these, but they're boots with an arc that goes from yeah, it's your a big fiberglass shin, the back rib. of your shin on your leg, for about like like a foot, another foot or two down. So you have this giant arch fiberglass spring attached to your leg that bends. So but because you a have a logo that, stick on a boot, yes. they run about three hundred dollars, and maybe they could be your next sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> I still have them in my garage. And like because they have that 
bouncy action, they're actually way easier to walk on than like normal stilts. So I go bounce around the parking lot and I'm all excited because I've got jumping stilts on. I've always wanted to try these things out. And then he's like, how you feeling? You feeling good? And I was like, yeah, I'm feeling great. And he's like, good. And then he's like, come over here. So I go over to his car and in one swift motion, he pulls out one six foot long foam sword and then another six foot long sword in a unicycle <laughs> and jumps on the unicycle and an all in one motion jumps on the unicycle and throws me the other sword and swings out his other sword and goes on guard. <laughs> and that's when I knew we were going to be great friends. So that's right. We've heard multiple stories because this just reminded me you are the one I've heard that is more coordinated drunk on a unicycle than you are standing. Well, it all depends on when you learn how to do stuff. So <laughs> if you learn, research and study for your test when you're drunk, you should take your test drunk. It's state to Fair enough. So right. That is sound yes. logic to me. So if you spend that. a lot of time practicing doing something when you're drunk, then you should do it drunk. <laughs> yes. Uh, another time in another life, I was a street performer and did fire performance. And this was the same time that I hung out with Sam constantly. And Sam calls me one night, he's like, oh, where are you going to that? And it was all one word because Sam was real drunk and I was like, I don't think you should come out tonight. And he's like, ah, whatever, I'm coming. And uh, I don't think we should talk about and, and then, <laughs> or encourage the things you're about to encourage. And then about a minute and a half later, I see Sam riding his unicycle down the sidewalk, juggling juggling clubs. And I was like, oh, Sam's fine. He's riding his unicycle juggling. And then he goes to step off the unicycle and meets the concrete real quick. Can't walk because he's drunk. But you unicycle, can unicycle provides a lot of forward <laughs> momentum on top of centrifugal force. <laughs> <laughs> so if you combine the two together, as long as you keep going in a forward path. But you could juggle. Yeah. No. I, Mo I, most people can't juggle sober on solid ground. Yeah. <laughs> Sam could juggle on a they unicycle <laughs> while drunk. And you can't argue with me because you were drunk. So anyway. Sam and I have a lot of good memories. We've had a lot of good times. And then Sam moved away because he got a cool job being an engineer making stuff. So, you know. So what's this paper thing you want to... So I want to talk about L-Cross. All right, so that's about where uh, everything kind of derailed. And we, we sprung recording on the podcast on Sam the night before, and he never really felt very prepared for what he wanted to talk about. He wanted to talk about engineering failures uh, that he had experienced and seen, um, and everything just kind of went off the rails about 10 minutes in. So we're not going to use the rest of what we recorded, uh, but what we are going to talk about is um, some things that Aaron and I have been dealing with which is uh um hindrances to making and how we're overcoming those so um yeah do you want to start aaron <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure so at least for me i think we've we've uh we've mentioned on a couple of the other shows but it's it's definitely a combination of being a, a new parent so my yeah. wife and I are still, you know, trying to get a hold of that. But also, um, makerspace uh, officer duties, especially now that I'm, as of today, acting president of River City Woo! Labs. Congratulations, uh, Aaron. <laughs> or congratulations, me. I'm not sure. I am no longer <laughs> acting president of River City Labs. Yeah, so between all of those, uh, free time is limited. And uh, I'm trying to make sure I, you know, spend plenty of time with my family. Yeah. But so mine are mostly time based. Um, I'll probably think of more as we as we keep talking. Yeah. But for now, that's 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 what comes to mind. So mine are time based too, but a a lot of what the, my time based hindrances have done to me is created. Um, space hindrances and insane amounts of clutter 
And I've always been an advocate for like a person's workspace is like their brain. And uh, my brain is very chaotic and all over the place and constantly doing 12 different things. And that's what my workspaces look like. And uh, when I don't have time to focus on them, they just get insanely cluttered and um, to, just to the point where I can't even work in them. So I about halfway through break, once I started working on the tool changer and really started caring about my workspace again, um, I kind of went nuts and moved one entire workspace into a different bedroom and then threw out two entire pickup truckloads of old projects and things. And um, it's it's pretty incredible what, <laughs> what happens when you go through old stuff and you get rid of things. Um, I'm really, really excited with my new workspace that I've been able to set up. And uh, now my kids have a playroom that they can destroy instead of ins- destroying my entire house. So I'm nice. excited about that too. So I, I, a couple other things came to my mind. Um, I had made a, cu- a couple of my uh, Christmas gifts for my parents. And those were, I made an Internet of Things stock price ticker for my dad. Yeah, we talked w- about it in our, our initial part ah, of the episode. Cool. Yeah, yep. so... So, yeah, so that'll be fresh in your memory. Yeah, but, <laughs> just so not that, ours, because this is so, like five days later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that took me a good, I don't even know, at least 10. It took you like two solid weeks, man. I remember when you started on it. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was trying to think of actual in time and hours, but like it took me like oh. a, at least a couple, several, maybe a week worth of time just in programming the firmware. Wow. Because it was... It, on the surface, it didn't sound too difficult. It's like, oh, you're just querying an API and parsing the results and throwing it on an LCD screen. But it, it just became a lot. I'm just not that great with uh, not that great with C, and well, that's all. That's pretty much what this was, and yeah. <laughs> just all, all the intricacies of dealing with low level language. But um, but I also have other projects I've been wanting to do, but these became a priority because I was. I didn't like. I don't like the idea of buying gifts anymore. So I've been trying to make them, and I, I guess my, my whole point with this is a, a struggle for me, and I'm sure other makers is uh, taking on just about any cool idea under the sun for as a project, yes. and then you get an infinite backlog and a, and a constant reshuffling of priorities. Um, and, and then what, you get two pickup truck loads of old projects that you throw away. <laughs> exactly, away. exactly. And, so and that's exactly where I've been for the last two years. Is like every time somebody comes up to me and I'm like, "Boy, that sounds. I want to work on that. Let's do it." <laughs> and then I have a drift trike and uh, an IoT chameleon cage that I'm working on, and like everything. It it, it never ends. Mm-hmm. Um, it's prioritization is absolutely critical to being successful, I think. Um, and not getting burnt out. Yeah. Yeah. So for me this year, I'm going to try not to add on more projects to my workload. Is this uh, a new year's resolution podcast? Cause it's new year's today. <laughs> it could be, it could be. I'm not too big like, on, uh, I'm not too big on resolutions, but I'm not. It's just, <laughs> The, the past two weeks I've had off from work, it's been, there's been a lot of uh, self-reflection on the past year and what do I want to change and how can I make it different? So, yeah, I think this is one of those aspects. I, I've had like a week and a half off work and it's been the same for me. And I don't think it's because it's New Year's. I think had I had a week and a half off work to sit and stew about different things, I would have come to these same conclusions. But my my biggest ones are I'm always harping on people at work and in the makerspace to like just put your tools away. But in my own shop, I'm terrible about it because, you know, I know where I left the three millimeter Allen wrench most of the time. But three months later, when I come back and I need that Allen wrench, I don't remember where I left it. And then I end up with these just giant piles of projects. So my my thing I'm going to try to focus on this year is 
giving myself appropriate amounts of time to work on things and not, um, you know, try to shove a giant printer build into eight hours. Um, uh, the, the tool changer for me has been a really good reflection of my own skills and my own time because I really care about this project. I've put a lot of effort into it leading up to this. So I really want it to be nice and not a jumble of wires and crap. So I've been taking my time on it. And it's been really nice to just take my time and focus on one thing. Yeah. You know, as I'm trying to remodel my workspace at the same time, I'm not changing at all. What am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think for me, I'm going to, I don't plan on taking any other projects on most for most of the year. Um, mostly cause I want to focus on the podcast cause I, I'm having a lot of fun with it and, Yes, we, we've got big plans for a uh, rep rep fest now. Woo, rep and rep it's, fest! It's kind of one of our official coming outs. <laughs> so uh, I want to focus yeah. on that. Um, also, I need to focus on the makerspace now that I'm president, and I got big plans for it. So I want to make sure I minimize that I can minimize the amount of other distractions to get that stuff done. But the I've got big plans to be a super distracting member. It's going to be great. So we're just swapping places then? Yes. <laughs> it's going to be excellent. Yeah. Um, besides that, uh, the one major project I'm pretty much going to spend all year on is the access control system, which I think we've talked about multiple times on the show. Yes. But the it's, a, it's just a small um, RFID badge system where... Um, it restricts users to machines based on if they're, they've been trained or not. And I've been making some progress over the past year and a half on it. Came to a bunch of standstills between work and other stuff. But I really think it's going to be really important to the future success of the space. Yes. So I want to, you know, make a good effort to actually try and get that done. So. Yeah, I think as we gain more members and we push more members to actually utilize the space um, you know, a as we want it to be utilized, I think having both the access control system and having good machine documentation, which is my goal for the makerspace this year, is to uh, work on the machine documentation as much as I can because that's something that I can do from here and I don't have to be at the space to do it. Um, all right, that's that's one of my goals for this year is to uh, get the wiki really, really good so that when people have questions, they don't have to find somebody or feel like they have to post on Slack. There's right. know, like, a, like a barcode or something that they can scan and just pull up on their phone and get most of their questions answered, um, you know, assuming they've already been trained, but they just need a, a quick refresh on like, you know, which screen do I go to on the... Uh, 3D printer to preheat a nozzle or, or like, you know, what's our Octoprint website? You know, little things like that that should be automated to the point where... The Octoprint website's already on there. And you know what? People still ask in Slack what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, things like that. Yeah, those are all really good, good plans. Um, I'm just glad some people are using the wiki. Um, I know Fred's been adding some stuff to it. And I think Jim has done a, a few things, but most of it was just my initial, um, my initial effort just to get it up and get it. I, I think I spent a good week or two weeks actually working on an overall structure for it because the, the way wiki JS works is that you just get basic markdown as far as you get the one page and that's it. Yeah. And the rest is up to you. So I was I was looking at other makerspaces wikis and and other wikis in general. Like how how are are the how are the pages organized and how do they link with each other and yeah. how can I adapt that to WikiJS in a super simple way to where everything's just all Markdown files all the time. So Markdown's so great. And now that I've started to really dive into it, I I really really embrace Markdown. It's great. What else are you gonna work on this year? Anything? I'm actually making a small, uh, re uh, a small recording booth downstairs. Yeah. I got a bunch of new equipment, which I'm currently using um, for Christmas. I got a new 
uh, focus right solo no the focus right scarlet solo um, usb interface an xlr cable i got the newer brand uh boom arm yeah i did Wait. manage to get a akg akg p420 blaze it mic the one that we actually used uh last when we, when we recorded five days ago exact yeah. same mic and a pop filter so my favorite part of that is we all three record on the same mics now so editing is going to be easier i hope nice um yeah because i've got a 420 as well and uh absolutely love it but yeah yeah so i also have uh four um 80 inch by 80 inch um uh like a acoustic sound blankets coming in oh, nice. from from vocal booth to go.com and uh let's see i've got two that i ordered my mom ordered me other two so that, that's a really annoying story so she ordered them <laughs> weeks ago so that they'd be here by Christmas. Um, they came like a couple days late, which was fine. But my, my brother and his wife were here for the holidays and then moving to Florida for his new job. Well, they couldn't t- take everything on the flight. So they, sh- they had a box set out to ship to Florida with their own stuff. So they sat on the porch for my brother's wife's dad to pick up and ship. Well, FedEx also, also dropped off my package of the two blankets. Oh, no. And he's like, oh, I guess there's two. So then he picked up my box, too, and shipped <laughs> it to Florida. So now I have to wait for it to get there. And then my brother then has to send it back. <laughs> Very annoying. That's amazing. I know. What a well, terrible story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyways, I'm getting those in. And I'm going to do a very standard 2 by 4 um, frame for them. So I've got four of those blankets coming in. I'm going to do three around the perimeter um, and then one over the top. I've got some carpet squares downstairs that I'm going to use for the flooring. I have a, little, a small glass desk. That I'm gonna, it's going to come out to be around a five-foot square studio. So cool. It's going to be pretty decently sized. So yeah. I can fit a small desk. I can fit my laptop, fit all the recording stuff. Um, I, I was actually playing around a bit earlier with uh, a Raspberry Pi. I was hoping I could get away with a a pie as a a small you know silent dedicated recording computer, but as it turns out, Discord Discord's uh, app is only sixty four bit. Okay, and uh, Chromium takes up too much RAM um, on what, the Pi. I wonder if you could do it on like a Pine sixty four or one of the larger single board computers. Oh yeah. Maybe like an Edison. Yeah. And, you know, there's always like the fanless uh, mini ITX yeah. um, motherboards that you could do. And Linux runs really good on those usually. Yeah, so. that, that's my second. That's my second option, even though they'll cost more money. I'm at the makerspace right now. Somewhere. Oh, yeah, I'll try that then. Yeah, one of the things I noticed when I moved all of my makery lab stuff into this room which is also where i record now is uh the fans for my gaming pc are so much louder in a room that has enclosed walls than in a big (laughs) open basement so i ended up uh sliding it under my desk which i couldn't do in the old space i was in and then insulating under my desk with sound foam and that brought the fan noise down like two and a half db and nice. uh, it's pretty quiet now. I can still see it, uh, but it's it's not terrible. So we'll have to see. But, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited well, for my new setup. Yeah, me too. It's a nice upgrade from the Blue Yeti. I think it served its purpose. Well, now it can serve its purpose traveling with us to Murph and other events. Yeah. And being our our mobile thing. Because, you know, one of the biggest downfalls of USB mics is their inherent background hiss. And when you're at events and stuff, background hiss isn't really a problem. Because the background den of the event kind of takes care of that for you. 
going forward for 2019, what do you want to hear on Makers on Tap? Um, coming up, we are going to have a functioning E3D tool changer, and we're probably going to have E3D back on to talk about it. Um, we're also going to have a Emblazer core coming to us pretty soon that we can play with. So we'll uh, talk a little bit about that. And uh, Darkly Labs will be coming back on to talk about the Emblazer core and their uh, community maker section that they're building. I, I think it's called the Darkly Lab is what Dominic told me. Uh, but what else do you guys want to see coming up? Um, those are our, our main plans so far. Um, I know Aaron's got some guests lined up that joined us from our subreddit. So we needed to get those guys on. Those are going to be fun to talk about. Um, yeah, let us know. This is the end of the podcast. <laughs> this is the most awkward episode ever. Thanks, guys. <laughs>